Hi guys, this is Jude from EasyTex. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating a number of measures you can implement to prevent your laptop from overheating. I will also be discussing some of the common causes of overheating in most laptops and the possible preventive strategies one could take in each case. An obvious sign of this problem is of course the spreading of heat across different components of your laptop, from the cooling grills to the top and base cover, the palm rest, the touchpad, and sometimes even the keyboard. This effect is more felt if any or some of these parts are made from metal. Another obvious sign of overheating is the unusual loud spinning noise from the cooling fan, as you can hear from this laptop. Now this fan speed is controlled by an onboard temperature sensor to moderate the speed according to the temperature of your processor or the GPU. In addition to this noise, you would also have to worry about the effects such high temperatures could have on your system components, your energy consumption level and of course the possibility of slowing down the performance of your laptop. The solutions to this problem are in two categories. First we have the hardware fixes where you will need to take the laptop apart. And then we also have the soft fixes where you can change some system settings and configurations in order to solve this problem. So if you are not sure how to take your laptop apart or if you don't have the required tools, then you can simply implement the soft fixes which I'll be covering in another video tutorial. I'll leave a link in the description. And with that said, let's jump right into it. So first, let's talk about the causes of overheating in laptops. Without getting too deep into technical details, just like other electronics, heat is generated in laptops by the movement of electrons across millions of circuits and the internal resistance these electrons encounter during such movement. From this basic explanation, it means that the electrical energy from your power adapter or battery is the original source of every heat produced by your laptop. Now even if you live in an arctic region and for some reason you need some extra heating in your room, you don't necessarily want it coming from your laptop. So which components actually produce the most heat in laptops? Well, every component with some internal resistance will produce some amount of heat. But the bulk of the heat generated in laptops comes from the processor and the graphics processing unit, as the CPU and the GPU. Now the question on what produces the most heat is largely dependent on the operations being performed. When handling 3D imaging, graphics design or gaming, the GPU can produce a substantially higher amount of heat than the CPU. So what could make a CPU or a GPU produce such high amount of heat that we can conclude that a laptop is overheating? First, let's take a look at the physical factors involved. Here I need to take the laptop apart in order to access the cooling system, so let's get down to it.
So this entire mechanism is largely responsible for the cooling of your laptop. And here you have the processor that's the CPU and the GPU, the graphic processing unit. Now using a blower and a simple brush, I'll be removing dust and debris from all around this mechanism. I will also be removing the old thermal paste using isopropyl alcohol. You don't have to use that if you don't have one. A simple piece of clean moist cotton will do just fine. Now I'm going to move from the surface of the processor to the outermost environment where the laptop is being used. With that, the first contact point is a thermal grease or the thermal compound as some people may choose to call it. This is a thermally conductive paste that serves as an interface material between the surface of the processor or the GPU and the cooling exchanger, usually a flat copper heat pipe or a heat sink in the case of desktop CPUs. The thermal paste helps to eliminate air spaces between the surface of the processor and the heat collectors in order to maximize heat transfer. Thermal compounds perform best when they are still in paste form and moist. So how often should you change your thermal grease? Well, that will depend on a number of factors like the type of thermal compound you have, whether silicone or silver or some other compounds. Then how frequently you use your laptop. Now this is somewhat an interesting factor because unlike most people would expect, using your laptop less frequently doesn't necessarily extend the life of your thermal paste. Actually it could accomplish the exact opposite, leaving the laptop unused for a very long period of time, say a year or two, and leaving it exposed to air could cause the thermal paste to dry up and become less conductive. Generally, your thermal paste could last anywhere from 4 to 7 years depending on the usage conditions. Usually, it's better to change this grease while performing the routine cleaning and dust removal from the cooling fan and the heat exchanger. So before returning the heat sink, ensure you clean off dust and debris from the coils. You can use a simple brush or an air blower to complete the process. And when applying the thermal paste, be mindful of the quantity of paste you apply. Too little might leave some air gaps, which you don't want. You also don't want to have it spilling all over the chip, so moderate is best. Next is to check the alignment of the flat surface of the heat sink. Here you need to carefully place the heat sink over the thermal paste while aligning the screws to their respective holes. You will notice some numbering around the screws. It's advisable to tighten the screws numerically in a round robin fashion. This will ensure proper alignment with the surface of the processor. And with that, you can be sure that the heat that comes from your processor is properly conducted to the heat exchangers.
The next thing you need to check is the cooling fan. This is a little fan that helps in providing faster airflow to push out heat from the heat exchangers to the outside through the grills. And like I mentioned earlier, the speed of this cooling fan is moderated by some onboard sensor technology which is designed to adjust the speed according to the cooling needs of the processor. So if for some reason you observe some loud spinning sound from your cooling fan over a prolonged period of time, then it's likely that your laptop is overheating and the fan is under pressure to provide cooling for your processor. Of course, there are other possible reasons why you may be getting some loud fan noise from your laptop. I'll be making a separate video on the causes of loud fan noise from laptops and how you can prevent or fix it. Next, you want to check the airflow under and around your laptop. This can be a major contributor to the overheating of your laptop. Blocking airflow from the grills and around the laptop not only contributes to overheating, but can also trigger severe malfunctioning and eventual shutdown of the laptop. Using your laptop in beds and sofas over a long period of time will eventually cause overheating due to block of airflow under and beside your laptop. The name laptop comes from the word lap, which implies that it was deemed to be placed for use on a person's lap. This might go well with the cooling system when performing non-intensive operations like reading an ebook, surfing the web, or running other simple applications. But when running intensive operations like video editing, rendering, gaming, or graphics design, then your lap might not be the most suitable place for your laptop because some cooling grills are located underneath the laptop, so blocking such grills will eventually lead to overheating. Another situation is the case of upgraded laptops. This Lenovo T530 came with an Intel i5 dual core processor, but I decided to upgrade it to an i7 quad core. Now when I use this laptop for video editing, it gets pretty intense during rendering. Now since I've upgraded this laptop from its initial configuration, I do not depend entirely on the initial cooling system when performing such intensive operations. So first I use a docking station to elevate the base and allow for more airflow and during such intensive operations like rendering, I also use this mini electric fan to support the cooling process. Now you don't need to have a mini electric fan or a docking station to prevent overheating. Keeping your laptop on a flat dry surface would suffice. But if you feel the need to increase airflow underneath, then you could put a small book or some other object under the battery when you place it on a desk. Then finally, your room temperature also matters. Keeping your laptop in an air-conditioned or cool environment would allow your system to cool down and prevent it from overheating. It's really that simple. Now, if you want to remove dust from the cooling system without changing the thermal grease, then an electric blower like this can do a great job with that. Here, you don't have to worry about unscrewing your laptop cooling system. You can simply blow from the grills and have the dust come out from the top like this. Now, if you're able to implement these strategies, then you would have solved 70 to 80% of the reason your laptop is overheating. The rest you can try to solve through some system settings and configurations, which I would like to call soft fixes. I'll leave a link in the video description for tutorial on how to do that. Now, an additional tip will be switching from mechanical hard drive to an SSD if you have the option to do so. This is not such a big factor, but mechanical hard drives, as we know, involve constant spinning of the electric motors, which can take up substantial amount of energy compared to SSDs with no moving parts. This extra energy could be contributing to the heating of your laptop also. Hope one of these was able to help you out. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. Share with anyone you think might want to see. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications on future tech support videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.